So we're here today because there's a measles outbreak in the community. So Columbus Public Health and Franklin County Public Health are currently investigating. We're currently investigating uh, this measles outbreak in the community. I didn't look at the numbers today, but as of yesterday, we've had 50 confirmed cases. There have been 20 hospitalizations out of those 50. And it, is, it has already affected children, uh, people between the ages of 6 months and 15 years old. How old? 50? 15 years yeah, old. 15 years. Yes. So out of these uh, 50 uh, cases, none of them has received the MMR vaccine. So the best way to protect your, uh, yourself and your loved ones against measles is to get the MMR vaccine. It's called the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine. We're here today because we really want to emphasize the fact that the vaccine is safe. It's highly effective. <laughs> And it does not cause autism. The vaccine does not also cause measles. So what is measles? Measles is a, res a respiratory disease caused by a virus. It is highly contagious. And millions of people get uh, <coughs> measles every year. So, what are the signs of measles? Measles usually starts with a fever. This fever may run up to 105 degrees. And then there's cough, runny nose, red or watery eyes, which is called, and white spots in the mouth. So these symptoms usually start between, you know, 7 to 14 days. So uh, somebody is contagious uh, four days before and four days at about four days after the, the symptoms uh, subside. So measles is transmitted by somebody who is infected coughing out. And so uh, if somebody, an infected person coughed out, nine out of ten people who are not vaccinated would most likely get the disease. So you, so 
so sorry. Uh, so you can imagine um, your little ones in, in a class of you know, 15, 20, how many? If there's one child there that coughs and has that disease, it's gonna spread around all those children. The measles virus, if somebody coughs it out, could remain in the air for two hours. So you can imagine in close uh, spaces like classrooms, at home, in the buses, in the cars, that it will be uh, passed on very, very quickly. So, children younger than five years old, and uh, adults older than 20 years old, are more likely to have complications. Severe complications. The common complications, like ear infections, diarrhea, but we also have some severe complications. Pneumonia or infection of the lungs. Encephalitis or infection of the brain. What's encephalitis? Encephalitis and infection of the brain. And even in rare cases, death. About one to two people out of a thousand people that get measles would die. So how do we prevent measles? Vaccinations is the best way to present. So the MMR vaccine has is highly effective. Two doses, uh, this vaccine is given in two doses. The two doses, um, when somebody receives the two doses, they have up to 97% uh, protection. Even one dose uh, can pr uh, protect someone for 93%. Now, the elephant in the room. <laughs> Vaccines do not cause autism. Vaccines, vaccines do not cause autism. There have been many studies done that and uh, nine studies in particular have found no link between vaccines or mercury which is a substance that is used in vaccines used to be used in vaccines. So no no link has been found between vaccines and autism. Mercury Mercury was removed in vaccines uh, in the United States more than 20 years ago. Mercury na waha laga sare elementigas talala da Amerikan ka labatan sana ko. There may be a few vaccines still out there, um, and mercury is used 
let me, I'm sorry. Mercury is used. Mercury is used to uh, preserve vaccines. So a bottle of vaccines that contains several doses, uh, they inject a little bit of mercury in there to prevent germs from, from contaminating those vaccines. However, all vac children's vaccines now have, have individual doses. individual doses doses this means that there is no need to use mercury in children's vaccines. In fact, the MMR vaccine has never contained mercury. Now, that there's an outbreak in the community, what do we do? One of the main things is to make sure that children and everyone is up to date on the MMR vaccine. If you are sick, if the child is sick, stay home. Practice good infection control. Such as coughing in your elbow, elbow and not into your hands. Washing our hands often, and COVID has taught us to wear the mask. COVID mask On immunized people who are. Uh, People that are not vac vaccinated with uh, MMR vaccine, if you, uh, come, if you become exposed to measles, we need to quarantine for 21 days. How many? 21 days. If, sorry. So if someone has symptoms of measles, the, the, the first thing to do is to call your provider. If you are diagnosed with measles, you need to isolate for the period that uh, the symptoms appear. Up to five days after the symptoms disappear. People that are unvaccinated that become exposed to the uh, measles uh, infection. Should try to isolate from um, other persons, from sick persons. So here, here are some resources. Um, where can you get the measles vaccine, you may ask? Or after here, if you have more questions about measles, the outbreak in the community, you can contact Columbus Public Health, the information line. It's the first one, uh, it's the information line is 614 645 and choose option two. 
You can also call our immunization program directly by contacting the number below, 614-645-8180. So these are some of the providers where you can go to, to get a MISO, uh, MMR shot. Of course, you should always go to your uh, provider. But you could also come to the health department. We have two health departments in this area. We have two health departments in this area. Columbus Public Health. And Franklin County Public Health. Franklin County. There are also other providers like Heart of Ohio. Lutheran Social Services. And of course, Children's Hospital. And their primary care centers. Primary One Health Center. Primary One, South East Health Services. South East. South East Health Services. And you can get the MMR vaccine in all uh, local pharmacies. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for having us here, taking time to hear the information that we have to share. My name is Dr. Anya Freilich, and I'm a psychologist. Okay, I'll speak out louder. Sorry. Me too? Okay. <laughs> My name is Dr. Anya Freilich, and I'm a psychologist at Children's Hospital. And I work with children diagnosed with autism and their families. My colleague, Dr. Kendall Abbas, is here as well. He's a developmental behavioral pediatrician working with children. I'm going to give a little bit of an overview about vaccines and autism. If I was just to show you one slide, it would be this one. The American Academy of Pediatrics finds no evidence of vaccines causing autism. The overwhelming evidence and data that we find time after time with studies is that vaccines are safe and effective and are the uh, and are the most recommended way to protect all of us, children, teens, adults, from diseases. So there has been a long time when people have believed that vaccines, in particular the MMR vaccine, might cause autism. And there have been three questions or potential reasons that this, that this has been out there. The first is that all of the vaccines that have been developed and that are recommended for individuals are just too much for the body. Nine very large studies have all found that this is not true. 
سجال وحيالات أو ميلات أو لقصة برتاي أو لقصة سجع مي أم باء وحي سوشة جن تاس إني بنتها وحكة رئيسة شري. Looking at the MMR vaccine specifically and a potential connection to autism. داودا MMR كا الله قات مركي لفيري يا وحي سكو كان تا autism كا. Twenty-seven and some of those very very large studies all discount this theory. And lastly, looking at various ingredients in vaccines have also been researched. Philip spoke a little bit about it before, but again. The use of thimerosal as a preservative or the use of mercury, um, 12 studies discount this evidence. So there have been lots of different questions about autism and the MMR vaccine, and none of them are true. It's supposed to move. <laughs> There we go. I need to give it some time. The next few slides have some very specific information in them, um, but also uh, resources that, if you would like to access them through the web, can also do some reading on your own. So again, the American Academy of Pediatrics has reviewed 36 different studies looking at the MMR vaccine and autism. And some of these studies have been very, very large, including over half a million people. Research has been conducted uh, in many different countries around the world. Looking um, at populations in the UK, the United States, Japan, Finland, and Denmark. And all conclusively find no link between autism and the MMR vaccine. Uh, this is a meta presents a meta analysis, which means individual or individual studies that previously were put in combination to see if the results hold. And this very large meta-analysis also supported no link between autism and the MMR vaccine or the ingredients. Uh, these are pretty compelling population studies, again, showing no link of MMR and autism. Both, again, looking at over half a million children um, in first Finland and then in Denmark. Um, and they investigated not just receiving the vaccine, but also things like the age of receiving it, the timing, other factors. 
ayal kale si kuwa aan la siiyay intay u dhaxayd oo da'adooda ay jirto um i think this is for uh, this is again uh, showing in the large study in the United Kingdom um, that they were able actually to look at numbers of children diagnosed with autism before the M MMR vaccine was introduced and after. And the rates of autism before the MMR vaccine were introduced in the country and after were no different. Uh, so this was a very interesting uh, study out of Japan. Uh, this is connected to those who might have a higher risk of developing autism. So in a large population of children who had a higher risk of developing autism because they have a sibling diagnosed with autism, they received the vaccine and had no higher um, prevalence rates. Uh, and this, I think this is the last study. Um, this comes, this was a very large population study cutting, coming out of Japan. And it is an especially compelling case as in Japan, they started to phase out the use of MMR vaccine and then at, uh, in 1993 stopped the use of the vaccine. Yet in 1993 and years, years after that, autism rates continue to increase in the country. Okay, so autism is not caused by the MMR vaccine. Um, Dr. Abbas is going to uh, take the next part. So once again, my name is uh, Dr. Uh, Kendall Abbas. I'm a, a pediatrician that works with the developmental and behavioral doctors at Nationwide Children's Hospital. And I was going to give a little more general information on autism. So the first question I have is what causes autism? Based on everything we've heard from not only Mr. Philip but also Dr. Anya, it is not vaccines. We know that there is no single cause for autism. But rather, there are many factors that come together to increase a person's risk of having it. In general, two broad categories of risk factors are genetic factors and environmental factors. There are many con genetic conditions that can uh, put a person at, at higher risk of having autism. Okay. 
These can include Down syndrome, Fragile X, Rett syndrome, and many others. Most often we do not find a single genetic cause. But rather, it is many genes that come together to cause that effect. We know that sometimes autism can run in families. But it also can uh, present in families that have no members with autism at all. Due to a new genetic difference in that individual. There are also uh, many other factors that can play into a person developing autism. This can be anything uh, from uh, brain damage inside the womb to uh, low oxygen during delivery to being born premature or with a low birth weight as well as the losses in hearing or vision. This is only a short list of some of the things uh, that we know. This is only to give you an idea of how much can go into affecting a person's risk. So, to speak a little more generally, what is autism? Just as there are many things uh, that can influence its development, it can look several different ways. One child with autism may uh, behave very differently than another child that also has autism. However, Every person with autism will uh, demonstrate at least two features. Two features. First, uh, they will uh, have deficits in their ability to communicate socially. Such as having difficulty with back and forth conversation. Or struggling to use or understand nonverbal communication. The other main feature that these individuals uh, show is a pattern of repetitive or restricted range of behaviors. This can be anything uh, from having certain behaviors such as hand flapping or finger flicking. Mm -hmm. To needing things to be the same all the time. Or having, for example, a low tolerance for uh, sound or a high tolerance for pain. Now, critically, these symptoms must be present in early childhood. Most often we see these symptoms develop between 18 and 24 months. But some people present, present earlier and others present later. This slide uh, shows uh, the same information as the last, but in a different form. Once again, all children uh, with autism, uh, to get the diagnosis, uh, must have impairment in their ability to communicate socially. Uh, 
and repetitive or restricted uh, patterns of behavior. So, if autism is su suspected, there is a way that we go about diagnosing it. Most often, a doctor will be involved. Because even though you cannot diagnose it uh, by just examining a patient physically, they often present with other medical problems which need treatment by a doctor. Either a doctor or a psychologist collecting a history can also be helpful. Psychologists can do a lot of uh, tests uh, with children for looking at how they think or how they behave. That can help make the diagnosis clear. Because their language is uh, delayed, we also have a speech therapist evaluate them often. We also have their hearing tested to make sure that's uh, not a factor. Because obviously if you can't hear language, you'll have trouble developing it. We also often have them uh, sent to a, a genetic doctor. To check them for some of those genetic factors that we talked about earlier. So, an important point I wanted to bring up is that there is no cure for autism. It is uh, just a difference in how the brain is put together and how it functions. Knowing uh, that, our goals uh, for treatment are to uh, support uh, these kids and help them do the best they can. The therapies and supports that we give help them learn how to communicate. As well as uh, how to, or as well as helping their social skills and their ability to learn. Most often this involves not only their whole family, but a team of professionals. If a child is younger than three, we could then connect it with Help Me Grow, which is an organization that helps in children's early development. We also recommend therapies based on each child's specific strengths and weaknesses. We do have therapies more specific to autism that we often recommend. We also work to connect families with organizations that can help support them. And we also recommend that every child have supports set up individual to them at their school. Yeah. So, this is a summary of uh, what I and Dr. Anya have talked about. Neither vaccines in general nor too many vaccines cause autism. 
in spe uh, specifically the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine and mercury do not cause autism. <laughs> pediatrician at Nationwide Children's Hospital and in the primary care network. So we see many Somali families. I work in Northland, Sharon Woods, and I've always wondered myself why this community has such a fear of autism and the MMR. It's not in any of our other patients that we see this regular fear of MMR and autism. And when I wanted to... Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Why did it children so in doing some research, um, we looked at the Min uh, Minneapolis and Minnesota experience with the Somali community. And it turns out that earlier in 2005, the Somali community had 92, more than 92% of their children were vaccinated with MMR. And in that community, there was fear about why these autism rates were there. As um, the doctor mentioned, one in 32 um, uh, Somali children and one in 36 white children had autism and so there was fear in the community. So what I wanted to share is that Andrew Wakefield and the anti-vaccine activists targeted specifically the Somali community. So they have documented visits where Andrew Wakefield met at least twice himself <laughs> with the Somali families in Minnesota. Somali and the anti-vaccine activists were targeting this immigrant community and these fears. Now we understand that the studies have disproven Andrew Wakefield and that one study, right? But, but you know how information is spread and how people communicate within the Somali community and other Muslim communities as well. It's an oral tradition, right? So people were afraid, they're talking with each other, the emotions, right? If some family has a child with autism and they're afraid, then this becomes spread by discussion from Minneapolis to Columbus, it's very close, right? So the vaccination rate for MMR dropped to 40% from 92% 2017 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So the community was afraid and they stopped getting the vaccine from 90% to 40% in 2017. So they started having measles outbreaks and the Somali kids were affected and, and very hurt from the measles in Minneapolis. But the autism rate did not go down. So that's what I want you to understand. In that community, with that drop, people were refusing MMR. The autism rate did not go down, but those families suffered because of the measles that they experienced. <laughs> So it hurts my heart as a Muslim physician, and these are all our kids, to see this targeting of our immigrant and vulnerable communities with anti-vaccine activists in this way. So I just encourage you to get more information, listen to your doctors, reach out, and please try to educate yourselves because so we can best protect our children and our families. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.